And you can pick up the Tool Pro OM126 OBD scanner from Super Cheap Autos in, in Australia and New Zealand. Um, but this is equivalent to the Autofix OM126. So that's probably the first useful bit of information. You can look up your reviews and, and guides for the uh, Autofix with the same product number and it should be the same tool. Um, even in the super cheap catalog for firmware updates, it says go to the Autofix website. So it does have a, a wired connection to the OBD port for a tool in this price range. I think that's a good feature when you go for a cheap tool that's um, Bluetooth compatible like this one I've got, you know, the Bluetooth modules in them just burn out. And download, you can get firmware updates. That's nice, isn't it? Now with the Tool Pro plugged in and the ignition on, um, you'll have these options come up. These buttons will simply take you scrolling through the six options on screen and enter to take you to the car. So this is just going through, it's connected quite quickly. This is a 2013 Mazda Premacy with the two litre Sky Active motor. So it's had no trouble with that. Um, and it's uh, basically giving a an indication of what sort of data we can get here. Okay, so it's found two modules. Um, the second one seems to be just a transmission module that it, it's aware it's there but doesn't seem to be able to talk to it or, or interact with at all. So we'll focus on that first one. What you get show up in your car will differ of course depending on what this can talk to. Being a basic code reader it's mainly there to talk to your ECU. Uh, I wouldn't expect it to talk to your <coughs> ABS computer or body modules or various other things. So I've just gone enter to get into that screen. I'm going to have to zoom in a bit because it's such a, it is quite a small screen. <coughs> so you'll need to be that close to see so we can read codes. And it's pretty quick at returning messages. <clears throat> and um, I think, again, you know, having the cable connection probably helps. One of the reasons I bought this one, it has the data stream option. I'll come to, back to that in more detail. Freeze frame. So this is a read up of um, <clears throat> that the car stores of data at the time an error code was generated. <clears throat> So if you had an error code um, then you, and your vehicle supports this, you should have some data there. So um, this O2 sensor test goes through and it's not actually doing the test uh, on the OBD2 device. It's reading out the uh, car's O2 sensor test. So this one has <coughs> two sensors. And it's just coming up with a pass. So I, I'm not sure if you get a different information here. Um, and different cars or while it's running. I haven't played around with this too much because it's really about <coughs> what the car thinks whether well, the car thinks that the oxygen sensors are working well so <clears throat> what I find more useful are the, are the data stream so you have the option of viewing all items so at the moment it's just identifying what sensors it can connect to and read now a lot of these the uh, engine is off so a lot of these are not showing up we get a graphic display on this tiny little tool. Now of course being tiny it's the screen is small it makes it hard to see. Um, it's also very basic graphics so this cer certainly isn't going to match your Autel tablets etc. But it is going to give you something better than just a, um, an on-screen number. 
So again, it goes through and looks for the sensors when you push enter on this option. And then it's a case of going through and ticking which ones you want to plot. And you can plot up to three. So, um, and you can overplot them, right? So what would make sense to overplot? I would like to overplot. Um, we'll go ignition timing. Um, and we'll go for oxygen sensor. Okay, there we go. So they're flatlining. The engine isn't on. So let's start the engine up and see what happens. Now, you shouldn't get a um, much reading out of the oxygen sensor until it warms up, right? It needs to be uh, 600 degrees or something. Um, and there aren't any fancy auto, any fancy manual scaling options. It's only going to be the, uh, the default automatic scaling that it provides. In this case, it's giving generating a reasonable curve. It's also got a nice, nice color coded um, options down here. It tells me which is what. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble telling the orange from the red because it's so small. But you can see there the um, oxygen sensor in the green. That's, you know, that's an important one. And you can see it's climbing. The voltage is now at 0.78. So now that it's warmed up enough to generate a signal, the car's probably gone into closed loop. So if I had a malfunctioning O2 sensor, uh, or if you had two banks, you know, a, a, a V6 engine or something like that, two O2 sensors, you could overplot the two, see if they're both responding the same way. Very handy, very handy, I must say. So then an exit to get out of there. Um, and we'll just go back to those view all items. So again, we've got, you can see those numbers, they are actually changing. So you get some sense of what's going on. The petrol sky active motor. Um, now what you have show up here will depend on your car. Uh, emissions measures, you can access it through the menu or it has a shortcut here. So it's giving just a tick or a cross. The ones with the, like the HCAT, this car doesn't have that. So. Um, so that's why it's got a cross through it. If it had a, um, if it had an X, or a, uh, that would be uh, that it's failed for some reason. Okay, going into the setup function, you can set your function, your language, your unit of measure. You can turn the beep off. That'll be probably the first thing you do. Go in there, turn that off. What about other makes and models? Now we're in a 2004. Holden Commodore from Australia and we get a fail. A lot of the countries around the world that's uh, up to the mid 2000s. Okay now here we are in a 2003 Mini Cooper S and R53 and we're plugged in, ignition on and let's see if it can find anything going through the different auto detection protocol and it has failed to detect the protocol. Why? Because this is not an OBD2 car. And we will get this fail message again. List there for some people in terms of what protocol this can use. So a few final points. Um, so it does have a a micro USB connection in the base here uh, so you can connect there to do your firmware updates I was able to do that through using the autofix website um, now it, the, the record function is still a bit of a mystery to me I suspect it's only recording some basic information but correct me if I'm wrong some other things to consider so this is a, a for a low end OBD2 reader, this is uh, this is a good product. 
Now, um, it, it's not something that is going to cover you 100% of the time. Even, you know, your, your fancy meters are not going to cover uh, all vehicles. In order to get full, complete coverage, you know, do the ABS bleed on a particular make and model, you're talking big money. You're talking subscriptions and all that sort of thing. So um, it's assuming you're looking at, a, at the cheaper ones, the ones that are more affordable that you use occasionally, I'm sure this will cover you 80% of the time. Um, the conclusion I came to, it was better to pay a um, uh, mobile mechanic to come out, a uh, mobile auto electrician to come out um, to cover me for the times when this, this won't work. It's cheaper than buying a full setup. Anyway, you make your own choices. Um, the instruction manual is pretty good um, <clears throat> in terms of value when this is on sale it's a good deal um, there are so many options out there so um, and I'm certainly not going to tell you this is the best on the market or the worst you go through and look at your options but um, <clears throat> you know if you can find something on sale that ticks the boxes for you and covers you for 80% of the um, use you have for it then um, then buy it